Hey everyone, it's Nicole from Bake Du Jour and today we're going over all things buttercream. I'm going to be going over four different types of buttercream as well as take you through the process of how to make it and which product to use these buttercreams with. So let's go on a run to eat buttercream today. All right, as I said, we're going over four different types of buttercreams today. We are going over ermine buttercream, Italian meringue buttercream, American buttercream, and French buttercream. So let's get started first with what I like to call the sweet tooth buttercream. It is the sweetest of the buttercreams, and it is actually the safest if you're trying to sell cottage food-wise. So we've got the American buttercream. This one is very straightforward. It's probably the simplest, but makes the most mess because of the powdered sugar. But it is the best option for those who run a CFO because it has a very long shelf life because of how high the sugar content is. For me, because I'm pairing this with macarons usually, I have never been able to do the ratio of sugar to butter that most do. The typical ratio is two to one sugar to butter and I do about 1.4 of sugar, powdered sugar to butter. So my ratio is a little bit lower than most. I even have some recipes in my recipe book that is less than one to one. So I'll go even lower on sugar than butter like for my peanut butter butter cream. It makes it a lot less stiff if you're going to use less sugar and that's an issue if you're trying to frost a cake but for a filling like a macaron filling I got away with it if you want to use less sugar in your American buttercreams like I do make sure you're not adding too much liquid to flavor your buttercreams because it will curdle quickly it'll separate your batter and it does not look pretty when you have a separated buttercream all of that being said, let's get to how to make American buttercream. First things first, take out your butter, let it soften up. Once your butter is at room temperature, you're gonna start creaming your butter till it's nice and light in color and aerated. I use a paddle attachment and I'll also add a pinch of salt into my butter. So once you've added your butter and salt and whipped it up, you're gonna add in your 160 grams of confectioner sugar. Do little by little so it doesn't make a huge cloud of sugar in your face and all around. Once your sugar is all incorporated, whip for about three to five minutes on medium high till it's nice and light and fluffy and you feel like all of your confectioner sugar has dissolved and there's no gritty taste to your American buttercream. At this time, you can turn your mixer lower and add your flavoring. I have one teaspoon of vanilla in this recipe or vanilla paste is what I prefer, but I was out of it. But something really high quality for your flavoring is good for an American buttercream. You wanna offset that sweetness with superb flavors. So. Like I said before, a vanilla bean paste, adding peanut butter will take away from the sweetness or cocoa powder or using herbs or things that will round out your flavors really help. So if you use a little bit of cream in your buttercream, you could infuse lavender or different types of teas into your cream before you add it into your buttercream. Things like that will help enhance your buttercream and make it less sweet. All right, moving on from American buttercream and going to what I like to call the well-rounded buttercream. It's ermine buttercream. I had never heard of this buttercream actually until about a year ago when I saw the flower girl, Lindsay, uses this, this type of buttercream to frost her beautiful cakes. What you do is you basically make a roux on the stove top, it's almost like you're making a pastry cream and then you let it cool completely 
so it gives like a pudding texture when you add it to butter. This butter cream is good because it holds its shape when you pipe it and it's really easy to frost a cake with or fill macarons with if you're not worried about being gluten free. That's the one downfall for me because I do mostly macarons and I love that they're gluten free, that this has flour in it, thus making the product not gluten free completely. So that could deter a lot of people. But other than that, I think this is a beautifully well-rounded buttercream. Let's get started on how to make it. So for ermine buttercream, I searched and I found Live for Cake had a great recipe and I used that. This was actually my first time ever making it, so I had a ton of fun trying this out. You're going to take 33 grams of all-purpose flour, 200 grams of sugar, and a pinch of salt. Combine all that in a medium-sized pot and whisk it together to combine. Once your mixture is combined, you're going to add your 235 grams of milk and your teaspoon of vanilla. Turn your stove top on to about medium and you're going to whisk it continuously while you cook this mixture. Once it comes to a boil, make sure you continue to whisk vigorously and cook it off for about one to two more minutes once it's at that boil. This helps thicken it up even more to a pudding consistency and it also helps cook off the starch flavors that you get from the all-purpose flour. So this cooking off for one to two minutes once it's at a boil is super important. Once you've cooked it off for about two minutes after boil, transfer it to a shallow bowl and let it cool to room temperature about four to six hours before your next step. Once your flour butter mixture is cooled, get your room temperature butter and whip it up with a whisk attachment for about two to three minutes. Once it's changed color, it's light and fluffy, we're gonna start adding in our flour milk mixture one spoonful at a time. Once you're all complete and you've added all those spoonfuls of your milk and flour mixture, it will come together to be this beautiful buttercream. It's important to use this buttercream while it's at room temperature. If you store it in the refrigerator and use it later, make sure you re-whip it. This goes for all the buttercreams that I discussed today. It's good to bring all buttercreams to room temperature and re-whip before you use. Ermine buttercream can be left in your refrigerator for up to one week and it can be in your freezer in an airtight container for up to three months. Make sure you put plastic wrap directly on your frosting in your airtight container to make sure it doesn't absorb any odors from your freezer or refrigerator. Moving on to the next buttercream. I call this one the silky one. It is Silky Smooth, it's the Italian meringue buttercream, very similar to Swiss meringue buttercream. I chose to only showcase the Italian meringue in this video because I previously did a Swiss meringue buttercream in my five top filling videos for my macarons. You can check out Swiss meringue buttercream in that video. Here I'm going to showcase Callie the Baker's Italian meringue buttercream. I love her recipe because it is more sweet than my Swiss meringue buttercream. It's just super light and silky smooth and perfect for frosting your cakes. So let's get into how we make Italian meringue buttercream. So Italian meringue buttercream is just that. You make an Italian meringue and then you're going to add butter to it after. It's a two-step process. For our Italian meringue, you're going to take sugar and Make it moist enough to look like wet sand in your pan. You're gonna cook that up to 118 Celsius. While that's cooking up to 118 Celsius, you're going to take four eggs, separate them. Just like macarons, you do not want to get any yolks in your egg whites. We're only using our egg whites for this recipe. 
put your four egg whites into a bowl, nice clean bowl, and you're gonna whip these up till they're nice and foamy while your sugar syrup is reaching its target temperature. Once your sugar syrup reaches 118 Celsius, your egg whites should be really nice and foamy and you should see no liquid left at the bottom of your bowl, just white. With your mixer on high, you're gonna pour in your sugar syrup slowly. You're gonna let that whip up until your meringue has cooled. I like to make sure my meringue has cooled down to about 30 degrees Celsius so I know that my butter will not melt once I add it in there. Once your meringue has cooled, you are good to go and add your butter. I like to cube mine up and add them little bits at a time. I'll just drop in a cube of butter, let it whisk up a little bit, and then I'll put another piece in. So slowly drop in your pieces of butter until you have completely incorporated your butter into your meringue. You'll see your meringue drop a little bit and that's okay. It's just losing its air from the fat that you're adding. It will come together and create this beautiful, silky smooth frosting. So once you have incorporated all your butter, you can store this in a airtight container in the fridge for up to a week and in the freezer for up to three months. Now we're moving on to the luxurious buttercream. I call the French buttercream luxurious because it is quite delicious. It's like ice cream and it is fabulous in macarons as fillings for your cake. So some things to take into consideration when you're using French buttercream is that it has a shorter shelf life because of those whole eggs and yolks in this recipe. And it also is a little bit of a softer buttercream, so it's not gonna hold its shape super well. I wouldn't recommend frosting a cake with this buttercream. Let's get started on making our French buttercream. First, you're gonna take 226 grams of European style room temperature butter. You're gonna whip that up with some salt for about three to five minutes. Once it's light and fluffy like your ermine buttercream, we're gonna set it aside, cover it up, and let it sit while we make our pat -a bomb So our pat -a bomb consists of our whole eggs and our cooked sugar syrup. So we're going to get one whole egg, one yolk, set it in a bowl fit for a stand mixer with a whisk attachment, and you're gonna whip that up to get really nice and voluminous. Unlike egg whites, this isn't going to triple in size, but it will get bigger and foamy and lighter in color. In a saucepan, we're going to put 23 grams of water and 75 grams of sugar. We're gonna cook this little amount. If you do have a small saucepan, smaller the better, because this is quite a small sugar syrup to cook. We're gonna cook this up to 118 Celsius. Use your digital thermometer for this. Once it reaches 118 Celsius, you're gonna turn those egg yolks and whole eggs on high, and you're gonna trickle in the sugar syrup. This is gonna cook your eggs and make them safe to eat. Pour that sugar syrup into your eggs on high, and you're going to whip until it's cooled. Once your pat -a bomb or your egg and egg yolk and sugar syrup is cooled, you're going to add that butter that we whipped up really well beforehand into it. So you're just gonna do it in two additions on a low speed for about 30 to 35 seconds tops. And that should incorporate your butter completely with your pat -a bomb and make this custardy delicious filling. As I said before, because of these yolks, this buttercream has a shorter shelf life. It does still freeze well, so you can freeze it, but in the refrigerator, I would not keep it longer than a week tops. This buttercream also reminds me of German buttercream, which you make a pastry cream and add it to butter, or more like a, a creme mousseline, which is two thirds pastry cream, one third a buttercream. So this is all of our buttercreams that we went over. You can definitely tell this is the French. It's got that yolk. It's not gonna be as white. So for coloring purposes, 
it is not going to be the best option. Another reason you should not frost your cake with this. Amazing filling though. We've got our Italian meringue. It is so silky smooth. So that meringue base just makes it incredibly easy to eat. And then we've got our ermine buttercream. Super well-rounded, but we've got the gluten in there in case someone has to be gluten-free. And then American buttercream, which is super sweet, but so many people love it. This is with ratio of 1.4 confectioner sugar to one butter. So it still holds shape, so that's good. All of these hold shape, but let's try our buttercreams. We've got our American buttercream. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys could hear, but it definitely has a crust over it. So it is even more sugar. If you do the normal two to one ratio of sugar to butter, it will crust over even more, which allows you to have designs that are going to be a little more protected and less likely to droop if it's in a hot environment or for traveling purposes if you're taking a cake somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna try not to eat too much because I have more to go. All right, ermine buttercream. Even with the flour, you'd think it would be heavy. It is so light and delicious, no crust on this. It's delicious. It's so good. I don't know why I haven't tried that before. Italian meringue. Let's do Italian meringue. Italian meringue. It is even lighter than the ermine buttercream. No crusting. It's like eating air almost. Sweet air. I love Callie's recipe. It is. It is so good. So good. My brown butter cupcake recipe is pretty dense. I like my cakes denser. So the dense uh, density of the cake plus the lightness of that frosting is so good. Okay, now the French buttercream. So decadent. Let's see how it goes with the, the rich cake. I can taste the salt in there. It's so good. It's not too rich. It's divine. Very luxurious as we named it. Super light, super soft. So it's really easy to eat. And it's definitely a great filling recipe. Now that I have maxed out on my sugar, I feel like we went over a ton in this video. If you guys try any of these recipes, let me know what your favorite is. I'm dying to know. If I had to pick a favorite for all like all around favorite, I'd have to say Italian meringue or Swiss meringue buttercream because it's just so versatile. You can flavor it really easily and it doesn't separate as easily as an American buttercream and it's just so good. That's it for our all things buttercream video. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. You can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as well and ring the bell for notifications when I put up new content or when I'm going live on my Monday live sessions every other week. Again, thank you. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy baking and happy buttercream dreams. Happy buttercream dreams.